Welcome to the wacky world of human evolution, where the story of how we got here is basically a series of fortunate accidents. Yep, we own our existence to some apes who decided to take a walk. Let's rewind the clock and take a stroll down memory lane, way back to about 4 million years ago. That's when our ancestors, the Australopithecus, decided to branch out, pun intended, from the tree-dwelling lifestyle and try something new. These daredevils began to walk upright, swapping their tree houses for a more grounded perspective. Walking on two legs might not seem like a big deal to us, but for these early hominids, it was a real game changer. By standing tall, they could see over tall grass, spot potential predators and even carry food and babies. Imagine trying to juggle a few apples, a baby and still stay in the tree. Not a pretty picture, right? But it wasn't just their walking habit that set our ancestors apart. They also had smaller canines than their predecessors. This might seem like a disadvantage, but it actually played a key role in their survival. Smaller teeth meant they didn't need to compete for the same resources as their larger toothed cousins. Instead, they could munch on a wider variety of foods, including fruits, nuts and roots. And let's not forget the pièce de résistance, their larger brain size. This allowed Australopithecus the mental capacity to develop basic tools, which in turn helped them to better adapt to their environment. It's kind of like upgrading from a flip phone to a smartphone. Suddenly, you've got all these new possibilities at your fingertips. So there you have it. Our first steps on the long road of evolution were taken by a bunch of upright walking small toothed big-brained apes who decided to trade in their tree-dwelling lifestyle for a bit of an adventure on the ground. So, next time you take a walk, remember, you are just following in your great, 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 you get the point, ancestors' footsteps. Now, let's dial back the clock about 2.3 million years. We are in the early Stone Age. The star of our show is Homo habilis, which translates as handyman. No, they didn't have a van and a tool belt, but they were the first of our ancestors to really get to grips with tools. You see, Homo habilis was a bit of an overachiever in the evolution games. They had brains about 50% larger than those Australopithecus, their predecessors. This increase in brain size meant they could start to do some really groundbreaking things, like making and using tools. Imagine the scene, a group of homo habilis sitting around, one of them picks up a rock and smashes it against another. Lo and behold, a sharp edge is created. This wasn't just a random act of stone bashing, this was the birth of the first ever swish army knife, minus the tweezers and that weird thing for getting stones out of horse hooves. These stone tools were a big deal, they allowed homo habilis to cut meat, break open bones to get the nutritious marrow inside and even shape wood. It was the dawn of a new era, where brains started to triumph over brown. The use of tools didn't just make life easier, it shaped our evolution. With tools, Homo habilis could access new foods, which fueled their growing brains. It was a virtuous cycle. Bigger brains led to better tools, which led to more food, which led to even bigger brains. And it's not just about the food. The ability to make and use tools required advanced cognitive skills. It was a sign that our ancestors were starting to think in complex ways. They were solving problems, planning ahead and maybe even teaching each other. So, next time you can't assemble that IKEA furniture, don't feel too bad. Our ancestors had a few million years of practice. Ever try to start a fire without a lighter? Yeah, me neither, but our ancestors Homo erectus, they were the original fire starters. Let's take a trip back in time, about 1,800,000 years ago, to when Homo erectus roamed the earth. These guys were the first of our ancestors to master fire, a feat that quite literally sparked a revolution. Fire, you see, was a game changer. It provided warmth, keeping them safe from the harsh elements and nasty predators. It offered light, extending their days beyond sunset. Fire also allowed Homo erectus to become the world's first barbecue enthusiast. 
By cooking food, especially meat, they could extract more calories and nutrients which fueled the growth of their brains. And let's not forget about the social aspect of fire. Picture this. A group of Homo erectus huddled around the fire, sharing stories, forming bonds and maybe even roasting the occasional marshmallow. Okay, maybe not the marshmallow part, but you get the idea. Fire was a catalyst for social cohesion and communication, crucial elements in our evolution. But that's not all. These fire starters were also the first hominids to pack their bags and explore the world beyond. Africa. Armed with their newfound fire starting abilities, they set out on the grandest adventure, spreading across the globe. From Africa to Asia and then to Europe, they were the original globe trotters. So, what does all this mean for us? Well, without fire, we wouldn't have evolved the way we did. Our brains wouldn't have grown as much, our social structure wouldn't have developed. And who knows, we might not have ventured out of Africa at all. Remember, every time you use a lighter or stove, you are standing on the shoulder of giants. Well, technically upright apes. From fire starters to Picasso's predecessors, let's talk about the first artist in our family tree, the Neanderthals. Yeah, you heard that right, the Neanderthals. No, they weren't just knuckle-dragging brutes grunting around the fire, they had a flair for the arts too. Now, when we talk about Neanderthals, it is easy to picture these folks as the less glamorous cousins of the hominid family. But hold on to your preconceived notions for a moment, because these guys were more sophisticated than you might think. For starters, they had brains just as big as ours, if not bigger. And with big brains come big ideas. It's believed that Neanderthals were capable of symbolic thought, which is a fancy word of saying they could think in abstracts. This is a cognitive ability that is crucial for creating art. But don't just take our word for it, there is evidence too. Archaeologists have discovered Neanderthal burial sites with signs of rituals, bodies carefully arranged with animal bones and flowers. Now, that's not exactly a Picasso, but it does show a certain sense of aesthetics, doesn't it? And then there are the cave paintings. In some caves in Spain, there are hand stencils and geometric designs that date back to more than 64,000 years ago. That's about 20,000 years before Homo sapiens even set foot in Europe. So, unless we had some time-traveling graffiti artists, it's safe to say these were the work of our artistic Neanderthals. So let's give credit where credit is due. The Neanderthals were more than just burly hunter-gatherers. They were artists, expressing themselves and their world through the mediums available to them. Be it burial, rituals or cave walls. So the next time you draw a stick figure, remember you are continuing a tradition that is at least 40,000 years old. Finally we arrive at us, the Homo sapiens, the thinking man. Although, if you look at some of our decisions, you might question that title. From the lush landscapes of Africa around 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens or wise men emerged with a brain that was prepared to outthink and outwit not only the natural world, but also their fellow hominids. Yes, we were not alone. We shared the world with others like us, but not quite us. Neanderthals, Denisovans and perhaps others we haven't even discovered yet. But what set us apart? Our cognitive abilities. We had the power to think, to reason, to learn and to remember. We could plan for the future, remember the past and adapt to the present. This cognitive revolution, as some call it, changed the game completely. It was like we were playing chess while the others were still trying to figure out checkers. As we grew in knowledge, we began to spread across the world. From Africa, we ventured into Asia, Europe and eventually the Americas. We adapted to each new environment, learning to survive the freezing cold, the scorching heat and everything in between. But we didn't just survive, we thrived. We developed complex societies, invented tools, discovered agriculture and even dabbled in art and music. We interacted with the other hominids, sometimes clashing, sometimes cooperating and, on occasion, even interbreeding. These interactions and migration weren't just a random walkabout. 
They shaped us, they molded us, turned us into the humans we are today. Each journey, each encounter, each challenge we faced left its imprint on us, shaping our cultures, our languages, our beliefs and even our genes. And so we continued evolving, not just physically, but also culturally and socially. We've come a long way from our humble beginnings. From a handful of hominids in Africa, we've grown into a global community of over 7 billion individuals. And there you have it, folks. From walking apes to fire-starting nomads to cave artists to modern humans. Quite a journey, right? And to think it all started with a single step. <laughs>